Our guest in this uh, segment is Michael Walton, Executive Director of the Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation. He, too, has written a poem. Uh, to be read on the program. Michael, good morning. We all look forward to hearing what you have spent hours and hours uh, toiling that's over. That's pretty funny, Bob. And you're so, <laughs> and you're so gifted at this, Michael. Yes. <laughs> you, it just came so natural to you. Let, let's put all the cameras on Michael yeah, for this uh, poem right now, not just the one. I have no poem, I'm afraid. No poem? No poem. Well, we'll just listen to John's again. John's no, no, no. <laughs> one and done. That was a great one, John. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, we're uh, focusing a bit on education here uh, today. On Thursday, we had a show that focused on discipline. It kind of took that turn and kind of stayed in that direction during the Thursday program. And our first one today, we had Dale Lee on the program. And in our last segment this hour, it'll be the vice president and the president of the Berkeley County Board of Education, Jackie Long and Pat Murphy. They'll be with us on the program. And Michael's segment, too, has uh, to do with education because of the grants you folks provide. It does, Rob. We've got our uh, mini and education grants that are uh, available for teachers in Jefferson, Berkeley, and Morgan County now. Um, we just put them up online. Uh, I think it was on Wednesday last week, and we've already gotten several uh, submissions. The teachers can apply for up to $500 for the mini grants, and then um, if they are working in collaboration with other teachers or if there's a department that wants to apply for one of the education grants, that's up to $2,000. It's a geographic uh, limitation. We yes, it is uh, Jefferson, Berkeley, and Morgan County. Okay. And we'll um, uh, accept applications through September fifteenth, um, and then in no in October, uh, the last uh, part of October, we'll do some receptions for the teachers that are receiving the grants, and we'll hold those in each of the three counties. Now, Michael, now, Bill says when he comes in, he's given me, because I'm younger, life lessons all the time. Mm -hmm. Can that be counted as an educator, and therefore can he apply for an education grant? No, these are only... Sorry, um, Bill. Sorry, Bill. <laughs> uh, only for teachers um, and schools in the, uh, in the three counties. It's uh, public schools in Jefferson, Berkeley, and Morgan counties, public school teachers. I now, tried, Bill. Yeah, you did try, but not very hard, but you tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's the nature of the grant? Are they methodology, how they, uh, how they go about teaching? Is it some aspect of a, a, a research, or just what is it? It's mostly to improve the classroom experience for students, especially the mini-grants. Um, uh, we had one last year that was... Uh, so are you saying mini, M-I-N-I? -I? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Sorry, yeah, That's Don, okay. it is, M <laughs> rather than the <laughs> M-A-N-Y grant. <laughs> You've been in the Mickey Mouse world too long. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry I interrupted. No, no, it's good. Um, I, I wanted to say that the grant we got, uh, the application we got last year was called Color Me Happy. And it was a teacher at, uh, actually it was one of the counselors at one of the um, elementary schools. And she had discovered that um, Crayola makes... Um, crayons that are different flesh tones and because they had so many students um, with different flesh mi mixed race um, and interesting de different kids uh, that were pulling up their regular crayon box and they pulled out the flesh and it didn't look like them she bought uh, boxes of crayons for all the students in the class and she also got construction paper so they made these wonderful drawings um, she said it was absolutely fantastic to see the kids pull out different color crayons and check it against their skin color and it was just kind of a neat thing that we had never heard of and it was i think a hundred and eighty two dollars for the crayons for all the kids in the school so that's cool yeah. so how many of these grants are awarded in each category it depends um it depends on the dollar amounts that they uh request and um how many teachers apply is there a but set maximum we've for got this a, year? about a hundred and twenty thousand dollars for the education and um many mini grants so so the two thousand dollar uh two thousand dollar grant uh would take what different twist or turn than the mini grant so if a, a a group of fifth grade teachers got together and they wanted to apply for uh, a program that had four or five different modules. Um, rather than each applying for a module, they could say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Our whole fifth grade um, teaching consortium will put together uh, an application and get 
two thousand dollars to pay for these four different five hundred dollar packages that kind of thing now the funding for these grants that's mostly through legacy gifts it is and and i thought that would be appropriate to talk about because august is uh, make a will month and it is a, a an opportunity for people to think about charitable giving um to benefit their nonprofit organizations that they find dear or charitable causes and in this case we've got probably half a dozen um, legacy gifts that fund the mini grants and the education grants. And you, were, you were looking at me when you said make a will month. I'm actually feeling very well. Thank you. It's not <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, John. You look a little flush today. I'm just uh, saying. No, no, no. Michael, how do you get the word out to the teachers about these grants? So we're very fortunate to have uh, connections in all three counties, um, in the public schools, the pre-K through um, grade 12 schools. Um, Elaine Bobo is already pushing it out in Berkeley County. Um, we've got folks in, in Morgan and Jefferson also helping us get the word out. What percentage of teachers any idea we might actually apply for a grant and of the teachers who apply what percentage will get a grant well we'll probably get a hundred uh a hundred or so applications we'll be able to fund about 70 of them i would think 60 or 70 could you apply for a grant to take a class on a field trip you can um yeah it, it's it, field trips are one of those things that are uh, a tough uh, sell for the grants committee um because they are expensive, they're a one-off, and if there's a, a something that is going to have a lasting impact um, in the classroom, that's probably going to get a little more traction. Um, one of the things that we've done, a lot of the teachers will collaborate with a group um, such as the Potomac Valley Audubon Society. Mm -hmm. They've got a great fourth grade program that they'll bring to your classroom. Um, so you don't have to do a field trip. You can you can have uh, these things come to you, and, and that's one of those things that gets a lot of traction. What are some of the more interesting grants that you have awarded? You mentioned the crayons. Yeah. Um, we also just recently did one for um, bugs in the classroom, and it's uh, everything from ant farms to different types of bugs, uh, to, uh, monarchs, uh, monarch butterfly eggs, and, you know, so that's kind of a cool thing where they're, um, raising the caterpillars and then mm -hmm. letting them go. It's just lots of wonderful things. A lot of the teachers have these great ideas, but they just don't have that few hundred dollars that they need to fund them. And then some of them are able to get some funding from school, but they don't from their school, but they don't have enough to mm -hmm. actually um, do the whole project. Are there extra points given for a project? You mentioned monarch butterflies that can be passed from one school to the other. Well, it'll actually something that uh, we did years ago. Um, we had a teacher in um, Shepherdstown Middle School who would apply for grants um, for her jazz band. And that was so inspiring that other schools started to do the same kind of thing. So yeah, it definitely can inspire others. And that's one of the reasons we get them together. We want them to talk about the different uh, grants that they've gotten. We like to uh, shine a light on the, the ones that have been very successful so that other teachers will try to replicate that. Is, the, is it open? They can apply for, they just generate the idea? Or do you have certain areas which the, you would encourage them to pursue? Totally open. I mean, we get applications for ukuleles. We get applications for um, just uh, different types of books. A lot of times the teachers will ask for a series of books that um, they'd like to have a, a classroom library for. Yeah, a few years ago, I think there was a push toward litter, anti-litter. Mm -hmm. Is something like that promoted as an area to, uh, to encourage? Well, there certainly are teachers that are uh, doing environmental programs, whether it's anti-litter or um, uh, helping with uh, food resources. I mean, they, they will be, um, we've got a couple that are doing uh, indoor gardens and, and gardens there at the school that they're able to focus on. You if, mentioned that there's a, a, a pot of money, I think you said $120,000. About 120 So is the, the goal to spend all 120 or could it be some left over because the grant applications didn't? Yes. Decide? It is to, the goal is to spend all 120 and there could be some left over if the grant 
applications are not uh, numerous enough or, or uh, high quality enough. And how does it break down in terms of grade level? Do you have a feel for that? I don't have a feel for it, honestly. Sometimes we get a lot from the, the primary schools, the, the, um, the intermediate schools, and then other times we'll get some really wonderful proposals from the high schools and middle schools. It, it's really hard to predict. I'm going to guess there must be a few teachers. You know, Mrs. Jones is there every year with a new idea. Oh, yeah. And and yep. is that a large portion of the, the grants that you get? I wouldn't say a large portion. Probably a third of it are, are teachers who've gotten grants from us in the past and realize that we're a good source of, of money if they have a good idea. And the grants go to the schools, but they're for the teachers. So the teachers um, are, are able to get whatever they've applied for by, um, by working with the principal, but we award the grants to the schools. And so when we do the grant awards, the principals come. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice uh, little reception. Michael, there's a, there can be an intimidation factor in applying for a grant. We think of a National Science Foundation grant where you give reams and reams of paper and a lot of esoteric thinking behind it. I'm sure you do just the opposite. Uh, how, how straightforward, how simple is it to apply for a grant? Well, thanks to Rebecca Knight, um, our office manager and grants manager, and Karen Hammond Dunn, our education uh, manager, we have a really simple grants program. Um, the applications are, are online. Um, it probably takes maybe 45 minutes to fill it out, if that. Um, if you're prepared, it's probably even quicker. You can kind of look at the application, see what it is, uh, get all the information together, and then fill out the application. Submit it. Um, you get a, a response that it's been submitted, and, um, and that's it. It's probably a couple of pages. It's not a, a lengthy tome yeah. by any means. Does, does it have to be sponsored by someone such as in, uh, the, the principal or the superintendent? It doesn't have to be sponsored. Yeah. I mean, what you want to do is you want to uh, work with your principal make sure that it's something that uh, they are aware of but it doesn't have to have their sign off necessarily at all in a given year how many grants would you expect to receive uh, applications applications sorry for the, the mini grants program it's usually a hundred for education it's probably uh, anywhere from 20 to 40 I would say we've split the education and youth grants apart this year um, we used to group them together we're going to do the youth grants immediately following the education grants and those will be for the nonprofit organizations that are dealing with the needs of children uh, the following question if you have a hundred so applicants uh, What's the review process? What's the mechanism for making a decision? Darts, so, darts, Bill. They yeah, use darts. Just, uh, <laughs> random. My wife random is actually select. part of it. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, what we do is we have a, a grants committee, and yeah. we'll break the committee into um, three counties. So we will look at each of the counties separately. Um, and the applications are, are reviewed that way. And then um, the grants committee all comes together. They talk about the ones from the different counties. They make their recommendations. And then ultimately, the entire grants committee makes a final recommendation to the board of directors. Are these grants done semester-wise or for the entire school year? Like? For the school year. So they, they will apply in August and September. We'll award them in October. And they have the entire school year to use them does anybody apply for a grant for food that would be a youth grant so those will be in october we will be um uh, looking at those september and october we'll accept uh, applications for youth grants so uh, groups like the uh, berkeley county backpack mm -hmm. that type of thing they will come to us for youth grants do you get any applications from homeschoolers, or are they not qualified, or do they not part of the? And, and this is strictly for the um, public school system, it, based on the donor's intent when they created. These. What about charter schools? If they have a, if there is a tuition amount that is charged, it is not acceptable. And so, what are the what oh, are the go ahead? Oh, not okay. Tuition? You mean a tuition for a student? Yeah, it, it, yeah, okay. yeah. It it has to be a strict. Yeah. That would be a private school. Charter schools, yeah. are, uh, uh, I think all the charter schools open have been public schools. Okay, yeah. So the the, the char charter schools are public. Yes. The yeah. private schools yeah. are the ones that are getting the tuition. Correct. correct. Yeah, assistance. Yeah. Sorry, John. No, it's okay. The, what are the metrics in terms of of what who should who should apply? Because there's like a world of difference between 
a project that deals with monarch butterflies and and crayons, right? So what right. what are the what are the goals that people are seeking? I think that the um, the grants committee. I, I tell teachers when they contact us and say, what do you think of this idea? And I say, well, I think it's a great idea, or I don't, whatever I think, but it's not me that's making the decision. And it's very hard to predict what's going to inspire the grants committee on a, in any given year. Um, that being said, I think that uh, if a teacher is going to apply what they really, to, to resonate with the grants committee, what they want to do is Make sure that they have their numbers down. Don't just say, I want $500 because I'm going to do this really cool project and it's going to cost, uh, well, close to $500. Do the numbers. Tell us if it's going to be $460 and why it is something that's special for the students, um, why it makes a difference, and why you can't get the money from your school basically. So the grants are not all for $500. Some are $327. Exactly okay. right. Yep, yep. We have had them, um, and we put a, a, a bottom cap at 100 We said, come up with ideas that cost 100 to $500. Tell us exactly what they're going to cost, um, and then we'll look at those applications. So it's basically reimbursement reimbursement uh, in the future for, uh, uh, for a product or a service that's been provided to the student. No. It is, um, we are using a, a process called trust-based philanthropy now where we award our grants up front. And so when the teachers come to the reception um, in October, they will um, receive the grant money right then. The, t the, the principal, the, the school will get the grant money. The teacher can go ahead and order everything that they um, have applied for and, and it's paid for. Are there categories you just don't do? Gosh. Let me think. I, I can't think of anything that we went, oh, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> um, but, I mean, we, we've seen some. Uh, there are things that uh, maybe uh, as a, a, that I'm not keen on, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't apply um, because they, they've been funded. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a, it's a very interesting thing to see what the uh, Grants Committee is inspired to, to fund. You've been doing this for how long, Michael? Um, I've been on... I'm not you, so they, uh, they, the grants to the schools for how long? Well, we've been doing um, youth and education grants almost since the beginning uh, okay. of, the, uh, of the foundation in 1995 because our earliest grants were from Jane, I mean, our earliest funds were established with legacy gifts from Jane Snyder. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was a, 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 all three counties' uh, youth and education grants. Okay, I think you've kind of answered my question. Uh, this <laughs> the the program that you have set up now for grants has that encouraged additional legacy gifts just for those uh, the grants? It may have. They, nobody said to me exactly. Well, this is why I've left this uh, this gift for you in the will. But I do think that it probably does uh, make people uh, think about leaving a legacy to um, fund, whether it be youth or education programs or senior citizens. I mean, we just get a lot of different programs being funded through legacy gifts. Do you see a, a shift toward technology in recent years, robots and electronics and, and that sort of thing? Yeah, we've gotten um, more and more uh, applications for robotics. And um, actually, one of the great uh, education grants that we did a few years ago was to the um, 4-H clubs in Morgan County, and I think it was a couple thousand dollars, and they were able to purchase one set of robots, and they did so well with that that they ended up getting about $20,000 in grants from other organizations, and they had a whole team of, ro uh, a whole group of robotics teams. I think they had three or four robotics teams from Morgan County that competed, and certainly some of the teachers um, compete in these international robotics competitions with their teams. We did one in um, South Middle School last year that was uh, going to Texas for a robotics team, and actually the W. Randy Smith Family Fund made a 
grant for that team to help with the expenses. So you're talking now about uh, grants for teachers. Mm -hmm. You also uh, provide grants to students going away to college. Is that later in the year? Scholarships, yeah, they go, uh, they get active. That's Karen Hammond Dunn again. She's our scholarship coordinator, and she will, um, she and Amy Pancake, our uh, director of affiliates over in Hampshire and Hardy County, work on the scholarships together. Um, They are updating the list of scholarships. We probably have a half a dozen new ones that will be going online this year. Um, And they will uh, go live on November 1st um, with the scholarship applications. And we encourage the students to look at those early, um, get everything in order, because there's a lot of stuff that you do have to provide. They're not as simple as a, a mini grants to teachers, certainly. So you have about $120,000 for this mini grant. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much do you have for the students and their for scholarships? Sco- for scholarships, yeah. we're pushing about $170,000 for scholarships now um, each year. And the typical scholarship would be for how much? They range from five hundred to five thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, the scholarship that was established by Colonel Dennis D. Barron um, with a legacy gift is for Civil Air Patrol um, cadets, and it's five thousand mm-hmm. dollars a year. So it's Ooh. a substantial scholarship, and as long as they're in school for the four, full four years, they're able to to get that. Very nice. Do you find that there that the applications come in bunches from individual schools? Are there some schools that kind of organize and come on, guys, we're going to do this thing? There are principals that are really proactive, and they will remind their teachers. So we'll get uh, Spring Mills Middle School, we're going to get a dozen applications from them, no question about it, because their principal is just like, this is a great program, and they give you (laughs) free money, so apply for it. And that doesn't that doesn't weigh in the decision. The fact that four have already been granted to one school does not weigh the decision as whether the, the it does not. No. Michael Walton has been our guest. He is the executive director of the Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation, and they have a series of mini grants that are available right now to teachers. And the deadline for applying for these grants would be when, Michael? September 15th. September 15th. And they can access this information through the schools. Yep. Or they can also just go to our website, um, ewvcf.org, and um, and go on the uh, request a, a, a grant page, and that's how you'll find all about it. Spell out the acronym for Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation, okay, good. E-W-V-C-F Thank you. Dot org. Do you have other uh, grant programs coming up you have deadlines for you'd like people to know about? Um, the Two Rivers Giving Circle is also uh, accepting applications right now. That's for um, natural resources conservation and historic preservation. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are through, Oct- I think, the, the end of September. Um, that we'll accept applications, and then we're going to be putting up our youth and educate uh, uh, our youth grants in uh, late September, early October. Do you have other funds that are coming online this year that will begin to expend money for the first time? Oh, what a great question! Thank you very much for reminding. It's a me. volume thing, Michael. Yeah. If I ask enough, one of them's going to be good. <laughs> 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 yes, um, the Mayor Harriet Johnson fund for youth and education. So we will be awarding $10,000 in um, youth grants and education grants from that fund this year. So that's real exciting to have that uh, up and running now. That's marvelous. We all loved Harriet and yep. Tom, and uh, we miss them greatly. Yep. They're great members of the community, and uh, we just don't replace people like that. Yep. You know, they were wonderful people. They sure were. Uh, Michael, how can people find out more about the Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation? The best way is to just go on our website, ewvcf.org. Good to see you again, sir. Very nice to see you. Are we out of time? We are completely out of time. Oh, that's great because I won't have to recite a poem. Oh, <laughs> maybe next time. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. <laughs> Michael Walton, he always brings up the dress code in the room. Makes the place look better. We like that about him.